try to win the presidential election, Donald Trump is relying on revisionist history and the short-term memory of the American people. And the Fox Propaganda Network is doing everything in its considerable power to aid and abet him, including when one of their MAGA cultists made a number of shocking lies about the Trump economy versus the Biden economy that we have to talk about. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we have a couple of clips to look at in this video, but the situation is this, and we've talked about it before. The Republican Party, right or wrong, and mostly wrong, enjoy a colossal and consistent polling advantage with respect to the economy. Now, we've also talked about how, according to all the relevant macroeconomic data, the economy tends to perform better when Democrats are in the White House. It's just true. You look at GDP growth, you look at job numbers, you look at unemployment, you look at average stock market performance, tends, things tend to be better when a Democrat is in the White House. But also, as we talked about, facts don't speak for themselves. And the Republican Party for decades has had this massive, turnkey, sophisticated propaganda machine that where they've constantly told the American people that the economy is better, the economy is better, the economy is better when they're in charge as opposed to Democrats. And Democrats have just, unfortunately, I think, dropped the ball with respect to messaging, and we're desperately trying to uh, catch up now. It doesn't help that, again, right or wrong, mostly wrong, Donald Trump enjoys the reputation of being a wildly successful businessman, even though if you like scratch at it and apply scrutiny, it's really not the case. But this is the context. And the economy tends to be a major issue which determines presidential election outcomes. So it's not like Biden can afford to fall too far behind in this respect. And yet again, recent polling suggests that uh, when Americans look back on the Trump presidency, they say it was mostly good for them compared to the Biden presidency, which is so bewildering when you consider the year 2020 in particular. But many Americans seem to have forgotten that Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, was president in 2020, where things were truly terrible because of the COVID pandemic that he mismanaged. So in the context of all of that, this is what Rachel Campos Duffy, a Fox propagandist, had to say about recent polling and about the Biden and Trump economies. I think the problem has always been for Joe Biden that the Trump years, which were the greatest economy in all of our lifetimes, was just four years ago. It's not like we have to go back into ancient history and remember when times were good. It was like we could go on vacation, you know, working yeah. class Americans could go on vacation. For so a few things. You're right. You don't have to go into ancient history. You just go into an entirely different world altogether. You go into an alternate universe. You go into fan fiction. You go into make-believe. Because the fact of the matter is the Trump economy was not the best economy of our lifetimes. And, and also, know how she, like every other right-wing pundit you know, who is presumably a multimillionaire Fox personality, she tries to pitch herself as one of the working people. You know, the working class could go on vacation. Well, as people pointed out during the Trump administration in 2020, most people couldn't afford to go on vacation either because they risk contracting uh, an incredibly dangerous virus, the coronavirus that Donald Trump was mismanaging, or because the United States under Donald Trump had to impose travel restrictions, right? So that's just simply not the case. But all this relies on this notion that Donald Trump wasn't president in 2020, that that was some sort of nebulous year. As a matter of fact, Republicans and the Fox Propaganda Network often go out of their way to insinuate that actually Joe Biden was effectively the de facto president in 2020, um, that he was responsible for the Black Lives Matter protest, that he was responsible for the Twitter censorship of Hunter Biden, which also the Hunter Biden story, which occurred in 2020 and which was vastly overstated. But basically that all the bad things that happened on Donald Trump's watch when he was president in 2020 Trump's not responsible for, which again is just this egregiously absurd standard that we would never, ever, ever hold any other person to. And certainly they wouldn't hold a Democrat to, but they want us to grade the Republicans. They want us to grade Donald Trump specifically on a curve. And I don't, nor should you. In fact, you should viciously, consistently, and loudly reject that and say, no, Trump was president for four years. And if we're going to blame or credit presidents for things that happen on their watch, then that standard applies to Donald Trump. As well, And we'll get into some of the specifics, but I also wanted to pull this clip that's recent from Jessica Tarlov, who's now on maternity leave, in which she reminds her MAGA co-hosts on The Five, who are regurgitating the same sort of thing that Campos Duffy is saying about the Biden economy versus the Trump economy. Jessica Tarlov brings the receipts and actually points out that in many respects, in most respects, the Biden economy is better than the Trump economy. Jump ball. That's what's going on. If this was the worst 
economy in the world, which is what you would say about it, there is no way that we would be even close to this. It would be a runaway for the person on the top of the Republican ticket. And it's not because people know wage growth is up. It's going past the rate of inflation. Unemployment, 3.8%, 26-month streak. We haven't seen that since the 1960s. You have to give some level of credit when credit is due. You have to. I agree that you do have to, if the standard is that presidents get the credit and the blame. And certainly when Trump was president and the economy was humming along, the Fox propaganda network, Trump himself, and um, the, you know, like all of right-wing media wanted to give him credit that he created this glorious economy from 2017 until 2019. Again, we don't count 2020 for some ridiculous reason. But the fact of the matter is, as we've discussed in previous videos, time didn't reset when Donald Trump was inaugurated in January 2017. He inherited a pretty booming economy from President Obama. Right? Again, presidents, when they're inaugurated, inherit the circumstances left for them by their predecessors, the good and the bad. So Donald Trump inherited an economy that was recovering pretty well from the recession that happened under George W. Bush, the previous Republican president. And then Trump basically kept the economy going along for the most part with some noticeable reductions, actually, as a matter of fact. Average job growth during the last two years of President Obama's administration was higher than during the first two years of the Trump administration. So we saw a reduction there. But I digress. For the most part, it was within the ballpark, a continuation of Obama-era trends. And then by the time Trump left office, the economy was in the toilet due to his mismanagement of COVID. So as this NBC News article, the headline says it very well, Trump inherited a booming economy and handed Biden a nation in shambles. So what the Fox Propaganda Network always does is, again, I use the metaphor of a skyscraper. So when Barack Obama became president, he basically inherited a crater left for him by George W. Bush, a Republican. And then from that crater, he spent eight years building a skyscraper. Okay, then he hands the skyscraper over. It's incomplete to Donald Trump. Donald Trump adds three levels to it on a hundred story building. Don, you know, Obama gets us out of the crater, builds a hundred stories. Donald Trump adds three or four stories, makes it even higher. And then on his watch, the whole thing crumbles again and is a crater again. And that's when Joe Biden steps into office. What Trump wants is for you to give him credit, not for the three or four stories he built before all of it, except for the part where it collapsed on his watch. And the Fox Propaganda Network pulls the same sleight of hand. That's what they want. You should reject it categorically. But they also show visible, you know, upset, uh, hurt feelings, uh, just despair when we get positive economic news under President Biden. This was a compilation that the Biden campaign put together recently. Uh, it was under Biden Harris HQ. We're sorry this is happening to you at Fox News. Stronger than expected. Headline number for March, 303,000 jobs added in the month of March. The expectation was 200,000. It's a good number, no question. Well, it's a good number, but is it too good for rate cuts? If the economy's on fire like this and we got 303,000 jobs in the month of March, jobs are plentiful with 303,000 jobs created. So good. So funny. And actually, what's funny is she was complaining, maybe the economy's too hot. Maybe the Federal Reserve won't cut interest rates, which they have promised to do, but they may renege on that, right? And then you have another Fox propaganda host, Larry Kudlow, a former Trump advisor, saying that the Fed better not cut interest rates, especially during an election year, because that would be a blatantly political move, right? Because it would be seen as helping President Biden, or it would be politically advantageous towards him. Even though Donald Trump, when he was president, was openly publicly pressuring the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates as well. So again, that double standard. It's okay for a sitting president when it's a Republican, when it's Donald Trump, to publicly pressure the Federal Reserve to take actions which are politically advantageous. But it's improper, it'd be wrong, for the Federal Reserve on its own volition, just because they think it's appropriate, to take actions which would incidentally be politically advantageous to a Democrat. Again, you see how that works? Super gross stuff from the Fox Propaganda Network, which we have to constantly point out and mock as well we should. It's our moral prerogative. Also want to point you to this Intelligencer article uh, written by Jonathan Chait, who um, has gotten some things wrong in previous articles that we've talked about. But he says, Paul Krugman is right about the economy and the polls are wrong. Sometimes experts are wrong, but not this time. Paul Krugman being a Nobel Prize winning economist and somebody who has been, you know, um, a staunch um, 
uh, a champion of the so-called vibe session theory, which is that the vibes surrounding the macro economy under President Biden are simply in stark contrast to the macroeconomic data, okay, that there's people's vibes are conflicting with what the actual data says. And we're not going to read the whole article, but his first paragraph, first couple of paragraphs are worth reading. One of the most uncomfortable arguments to make in America is that the people are wrong. It's especially uncomfortable when the subject is something that you experience in a more comfortable, privileged way than most people. And so when liberal economic elites insist the economy, which opinion polls consistently find the public considers terrible, is actually very good, it makes liberal economic elites come off badly. Paul Krugman is one of those dreaded liberal elites who believes the economy is actually good. So, at a much lower level of confidence and frequency, am I, referring to Jonathan Chait, we developed a number of explanations for why people believe an economy that the Wall Street Journal recently called the envy of the world is so awful. And it goes into it, the fact of the matter that, you know, poll after poll after poll shows that respondents believe that their personal finances are actually pretty good under President Biden. And actually, recent polls have indicated that not only do people find that their personal economic situation is pretty good, that their state level economy, that the state in which they live, their economy is doing pretty damn well. But then when you ask them to magnify out just a bit more and zoom out a bit more and go to the national level, then that's when the opinion flips and they're like, yeah, listen, I'm doing well. My state's doing well, but the country as a whole, economic, economically, it's in the toilet, right? This is a jarring uh, dysfunction and asymmetry between the macroeconomic data, which doesn't lie, and the widespread public sentiment. And listen, I believe that at least part of it, part of it, part of it is because the Biden administration, the Democratic Party, and those of us who are not conservative have just not with one voice been consistently talking about these things. We just assume facts speak for themselves, and they don't. I'm sorry. I just don't buy that they do. I do not buy that they do. And the proof is in the pudding because the Republicans, especially Donald Trump, have never allowed the facts to speak for themselves. As a matter of fact, they very often say things in contradiction to the facts. They just lie. Donald Trump can never go in front of a microphone without telling the American people again and again and again and again and again that the economy was amazing when he was president. In 2020, when COVID was crippling the economy, he kept saying how great the economy was. And I think that that consistent message when spoken in a loud, choral voice with one political party, I think that that will indeed shape public opinion. And it doesn't help that, again, the collective memory of the American people is relatively short. 2020 was four years ago, and it's easy to confuse the dates, I think, for some people to think, oh, it must have been when Biden was president. Or no, we just don't count that. for It's almost like this traumatic experience that we blocked off. But the fact of the matter is Donald Trump was president in 2020. And by the Republicans' own logic, that means that he is responsible for the failures that occurred in 2020 and the economic fallout, because that's the standard that they would impose on a Democrat if the shoe was on the other foot. And also, Donald Trump inherited a pretty good economy from Barack Obama. In contrast, President Biden inherited an economy in the toilet. And right now, the economy, as the conservative Wall Street Journal says, just objectively, from a macroeconomic level, is indeed the envy of the world. Let me know what you think in the comments.